four major ways to make money. If I had five thousand dollars, what I do with it? Number one, I understand the rules of how to make money. This is part of the money game. How do I make money where I am in control of my finances? Okay. So first way to make money is be active. Punch in, punch out. You got a nine to five. You got a job. W two. That's called active income. You have to actively work for it. You're earning it. Okay. And the IRS considers this type of income, not only is it limited in terms of what you can make, but the, the IRS considers this some of the most highly income taxable income that you can make. It's called earned income. Okay? And it's also not only highest taxable, but it's also limited because there's only so many 9 to 5, 40, 50, 60 hour overtime weeks that you can work. There's only so many homes. There's only so much legal services. There's only so many teeth you got to clean, so many patients you got to see, so many clients to train. There's only so many insurance policies you can sell in order for you to make money. That's called limited income. Why? Because you got to sleep, you got to eat, you got a family, you got a life. So the second part, and this is what a lot of people love to discover more of, which is called passive income. So when I started learning rule of money, I was like, what's passive income? That's money that you don't have to be there to earn. Whoa, that's, that kind of blows my mind away. Why? Because, for example, let's say you own a piece of real estate, you, you earn money from rental property. You have ownership in a business called business partnerships. You get, you get uh, a sh you're sharing the profits and the revenue stream of that business. Peer-to-peer -peer lending, you put your money here, people borrow it at four, five, six, ten percent. You, you lend them money and they pay you interest. Retirement income is considered passive income, right? 401k income, pension income, social security. This is called unlimited income because you never know how much this can grow. Because like that movie says, money never sleeps if you got money working for you. So lots of times people try to get over here to go over here. They take some of their, uh, their inner income to come over here. Or they come over to the third one, which is in this category, which is called portfolio income. Now you got stocks, bonds, you get income from dividends, interest, capital gains, royalties. Okay, I will tell you this. Rich people become rich because they make their money right here. If you take a look at Mitt Romney's tax forms, I was studying Mitt Romney when he was uh, uh, going up against uh, uh, Obama. I, I remember going, I'm just studying the rules of the money game. I was just studying IRS. I was looking at the IRS tax forms. You know what I realized? Mitt Romney, a politician, but he cut his teeth in, 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 in equity, in, in, in the stock market, in Wall Street. He makes his money right here. He makes very little money right here in salary. You know why? Because it's this category that gets, gets taxed the most. This category here gets taxed the least. Listen, Patrick Bidet was sharing me a letter he got from uh, Goldman Sachs last week about Biden's, about Biden's tax plan. He said that Biden wants, you know, Biden and his Democratic Party, they want to increase capital gains, which affects a lot of the income that you make here, instead of being taxed at maximum 20%. Right? What's over here? You can be taxed at 35 plus, right? You can, uh, if you're in California, you're looking at increasing tax from 13% to 16%. Here in the state of Illinois, they're looking to increase tax from a 5% flat tax to a progressive income tax. They're looking to tax you heavily right here. Why? Because they realize 90% of people are right here. Rich people are over here. People that make money are over here. Because why? They understand the rules of the money game. See, this is part of my education process with me not having a college degree. I don't have a master's. I don't have a PhD. But this is just what Patrick McDavid in his book, Your Next Five Moves, calls common sense, which can be learned. So when you look at here, they're looking at the, the Biden tax plan, the Democrats, they're looking to increase the capital gains tax to 20% to 39%. They're looking to double this. So in other words, what's my incentive if I'm an investor to, to, to take my money and look at more stocks, bonds, dividends, interest, capital gains, more royalties, more business investment? Why would it put it here? There is none because they're looking to tax it here just like regular income. So whenever, whenever I look at tax laws, I look at tax laws as a compensation plan. I look at tax laws as an indication of what the government wants me to do to be more fruitful, to create more jobs, to circulate money, and in return, they give me favorable, favorable tax consequences. Good tax, good tax consequences. For example, last year, we made more money than the year before but our tax bill was significantly less than the year before. Wait a minute. So in other words, one year we made more money, but our tax bill was less than the year we made less money. Why? Because it is. Understanding the Trump tax cuts. 
It's helped me out. Sure, a lot of people don't like the guy. I individually don't like the guy. But the tax laws, the Republican tax laws, has helped me understand what I should be doing with my money. That's a big reason why my business throughout this pandemic has exponentially grown. Did I just say the word exponentially? Yes, exponentially. You know why? Because I invested time to learn a business strategy, how to go in the next column, which is called not just earned income, active passive portfolio income. I learned how to create another form of income called compounding income. Okay? It's compounding income. So in other words, I got my business and my money compounding as time goes on, as I invest into myself, as I invest into other people, as I develop leadership within some of my organization, as I develop people that understand the rules of the money game, they work for my firm, they work with my firm, all this stuff starts to happen. Then I have very interesting conversations what to do with the money that's left over. Because my, my job, is my, my, my home, we keep our expenses low. And we keep our profit and our margins high. Why? Because we want to tuck money away here because we want to make sure we can constantly reinvest back into businesses or create jobs. Now this next area is I had to choose, because there's two different types of people in my opinion. You're either a saver, right? I'm just going to save money, save money, save money, or I want to be an investor. Again, one is more active and one is more passive. Guess which one? More passive is savers. Because I make my money, I save my money, I hope it grows. It's going to take me time and generations for that money to grow and compound. I'm passive about it. I'm trusting somebody else with my savings and investments. And I have hope. I have no predictability. I just have hope. And I hope it'll be there. In a time when I need my money the most, I hope. Hope it's there. See, that's a saver, okay? And listen, uh, uh, our family's only been here in America for one generation. I'm a first generation born Filipino here in America. My parents came here from the Philippines. In my entire working life, I've seen savers, I've, I've seen people go to school, I've seen people go get a job, I've seen people get, get, get degrees, but guess what I've never seen a lot of savers do? Retire sooner than later. And when I'm looking at it, investors, okay? They take a little bit more risk in the beginning. They may not get ahead in the short term as savers do. But guess what they do? They save, they tuck money away and develop a cushion, and they reinvest that money. They reinvest the money that they earned right back into themselves so they can expand their, expand their knowledge, their thought process. And here's the thing, what I realize a lot of investors do, they invest in seasons, not generations. What do I mean by seasons? Three months here, I'm looking for a quarterly, a quarterly report. I'm holding, I'm holding myself accountable to my success. I'm holding myself accountable to my work and my efforts. I work through seasons. I sow and then I reap and then I harvest and then I re-sow again. That's the process. They're active and they're involved. They're, they're seeking and guiding, expanding their wisdom. They're seeking, guiding, expanding people who have been there, done that. They walk into a room knowing a lot, but also at the same time walk into a room looking to learn. They go into the room knowing a lot, but also go into the room emptying their cup. See, that's an investor. One, one, one operates with humility, the other one operates with ego. Oh, I got, I got this MR 401k, da, 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 da. oh, I got this real estate portfolio, da, da, da. I got all this gold. Listen, awesome. One says, man, you know what? I got all this savings and real estate and portfolio and gold and da, 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 da. What am I missing? What else can I do to improve? How else can I get ahead? 